So last year, my brother gifted me this awesome chainsaw. And it's just perfect for around here, because I, I don't have any big trees, but every once in a while I need to just you know, zap up some branches that are getting a little close to the ground. And uh, it's fantastic. Only one thing is it only ran full throttle all the time. And the only way to get it to stop is you had to stall it out. So it worked perfect, obviously. But there's a little thing in the back of my head thinking, you know, if the wife or the kids ever want to run this, maybe I should get that fixed. So I decided today is going to be a good day to do that. And came out and I can't even get it started. So problem solved, right? Cool. Let's move on to something a little more important. I nearly forgot about this big pile of junk. Let's work on this. The plan is, is I'm going to get all the pieces that don't have paint on them out of here, degrease them a little bit, put them in a big tub full of, uh, I don't know, evapo rust or something to eat all the little rusty bits off of there. And well, the painted chunks, they're, uh, they're not looking so healthy. So, you know, I might just sneeze on this a little bit and get some more of that to come off of there. But we're going to strip all the aluminum down too, because there's, there's no saving that. Probably won't make you watch all this. I'll do one of those fast little forward deedly things, and uh, we'll see where we end up. But thanks for checking back in. One cool thing about this evapo rust is if you can't completely submerge your part in there, wrap her up with a paper towel as best you can. Get her on there nice and tight. And then I'll put one over this other piece. And we'll just bath her down again. Probably have to rotate that handle a time or two. And I should get the bigger size turkey pan. We'll let that stew for a while. All right, well, the evapo rust is evapo rusting. We're gonna knock some paint off of this stuff here. And I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this yet, but you know, this seems to work all right, so let's try it. Ah.
So, like all my projects, an indetermined amount of time has now passed between steps and, well, I figure it's time to clean off this junk off my bench because, well, there's other things I want to be doing out here and I'm starting to smell a little funky. So, I'm going to fish all the parts out of the evapo rust here. They've had time to cook and they're looking a little bit better, so let's check see how they're doing. And I've been scrubbing away at all the aluminum pieces and uh, well, I think I've got the old 201 pretty good shape and what I've been doing is hitting it with the old brake clean and that gets the paint all nice and loosened up and then using my little scrubby brush and the old uh, twisty grabber here and scrubbing off any of the remaining stuff and yeah, I could use a little bit more cleaning but that one's pretty close the base off of the H press and eh, there's still a little hanging on there I need to touch that up a little bit but really I need to get this uh, evapo rust put away here because well it's uh, done evaporated down about an inch out of there and that stuff isn't cheap so I'm gonna hold on to it I'm gonna put on my little fancy blue gloves here because well the old twirly poker got away from me a couple times and I've got uh, Missing some skin on some of my hands, and I'm not sure that stuff's real great to be soaking up into the old bloodstream. So we're gonna be we're gonna be safe here. So I'm gonna grab the pieces out of there, wipe them off a little bit, chunk them in the tub here, and uh, see if we need to de-rust any more stuff or see if we're good to go there. So let's get cooking on that. Took me a while to find a funnel, and well, this is the one I used to gas up the old lawn trimmer. And probably not good to have this stuff in there, but it's kind of rusty, so eh, sure it'll be fine. Won't it? Now I managed to spill most of that on the bench, so So I've got all my steel parts de-rustified now and got my aluminum frame of at least the 201 prepped prepped for painting and so I've moved over to my paint booth which is you know, just the other wall of my garage. I'm gonna prime this bad boy and then let her dry for a little while before we put our top coat on there and I'm using this Rust-Oleum self-etching primer etches and primes in one easy step and well this is what I found at the store and it says it's gonna work on aluminum and it, I probably won't but we're gonna give it a shot it says uh, do some couple of light coats couple of minutes apart so we're gonna see if we can follow the directions yeah turn up this nice grayish greenish color police car just rolled through the neighborhood Wonder what I did now anyway Let's get to painting. 
taped off the top here where the die comes in um, because that was polished aluminum top that was not painted might get a little bit in the bottom but I'm gonna clean the threaded portion here anyhow so I'm not too worried about that and I've crammed a rag down through the bore where the ram goes and again I'm gonna polish the inside of that after I'm done painting so if there's a little bit of overspray in there eh, it's all right we're gonna clean her up so let's see what we can do Smells kind of like that pink bubblegum stuff that loses its flavor in like 30 seconds. But it's good. Well, we're going to hang that up to dry for a couple of minutes and then do another coat. So it's been a couple hours since I primed everything and it's dry and the can says wait a couple hours for you to top coat it. So that's what I did. We're going to go ahead and paint the 201 and I've got a Rust-Oleum Satin Black here. Um, you know, the original color is black, so let's go with black. So, splash some paint on this guy. I'm not going to be able to do the H one today because I'd like to paint it red. And the only red I have is a real shiny, glossy, candy apple red. And so, I'm not going to go that fancy on that one. So, I'll do some shopping, but let's get the black one done. Alrighty, well as you can tell we jumped forward in the story a little bit here and now we have uh, a couple of press frames that have been repainted and ready to assemble. So I'm going to start digging through my big box of pieces here and uh, see if I can figure out what goes where and tap these all together. I'm not going to make you watch all that. I'll probably put all this in a little time lapsey fast forwardy thing. And when we get her all stuck back together, we'll talk about these two.
So I finally got these all put back together here and uh, I kind of like them. This one actually works. So that's nice. Handle's still a little messed up on this, but I'll get to that at some point. And at some point we'll talk more about each one of these, I suppose, and kind of the ins and outs of them. But um, I did just want to say something about kind of the, in the spirit of collectability. Um, I like vintage equipment and I like the stories behind it. And I know there's others out there that, you know, collect whatever it is, reloading presses, cars, guns, who have, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and so to those that collect, kind of the condition or the, um, part of the collectability of it comes from it being in a, an original condition, right? Um, you know, you can collect things that have been restored and that's fine too, I suppose, but a lot of it really comes down to is it original condition and when you're looking at you know, reloading presses like these you know you've watched me screw these up pretty good right they're not the same as they were before their history's been erased they have a facelift and they look a little bit different than they did before but if you're really into kind of original condition equipment there's a couple of things you can look out for if you're you know, looking for that and sometimes it's hard if you can't have your hands on it you just see a couple of pictures kind of on an auction site or you know whatever sometimes it's kind of hard to judge but there's a couple of things that I look for if I'm really looking for something that's in you know original unmolested unrestored condition and one of the things that people will do a lot of times is what I just did scrub the rust off slap a fresh coat of paint on it and boom it looks all nice and new right well problem is it doesn't look quite right um, hopefully if you're into collecting you kind of know what the originals look like and for me you know I would know that both of these you know this is kind of the right color this one was originally black and this one was originally red but there's something a little off about it this is a little too bright and that crinkle finish that's original to these presses is gone. The same with this. It's a little too bright, that original finish is gone. And something else you can look at, um, it's just a dead giveaway, is condition of paint versus condition of metal. So these are nice and shiny, right? And these pieces weren't blued from the factory. They would have been bare steel, nice and polished. But there's pitting on here. There's pitting on this. There's a lot of pitting on the rams uh, or on the, the guide rods here. These were originally chrome plated. They still have some chrome on them, but some of it's come off and there's pitting on there. So we have nice bright steel, but it's pitted. And you can't have the pitting without the rust. So obviously that patina has been removed off of here. So, you know, these would be just dead giveaways that these aren't original condition. That said, it's perfectly functional, you know. If you're wanting to slap this down and reload with it, which is probably what I'll do, no reason you can't. It's perfectly serviceable. Everything works. There's a yeah, there's a little bit of roughness to it from the from the pitting on here, but be just fine. So, you know, a lot of times people aren't trying to be deceptive, but you know, sometimes they they do spruce it up a little bit and. If you're looking for a collectible piece, eh, you gotta be a little careful with that, just like like anything. So, appreciate you guys sticking through all this with me. It's kind of drug out for a little while, but you know, that's life. Hopefully, we'll get back into talking about these at some point in the future. But uh, before then, I'm gonna get into some actual collectible pieces and that have uh, some patina and real stories to them. So, thanks again for watching. Appreciate it. Subscribe, like, do what you want. Thanks again.